station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Yes, I am ready for the event. Tokyo, this is Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Thanks, Hal. Station, this is Soichi Noguchi from Prime Minister's office. How do you hear me? Hi, Soichi. I read you loud and clear. Yoku kikoemasu. We have with us um, six children from the earthquake stricken areas, along with the Prime Minister and Minister of the Ministry of Education, Science and Technology. Prime Minister, please. Dr. Furuka, uh, I am Naoto Kan, Prime Minister of Japan. Um, it is a very happy opportunity for me to be connected with ISS. Yes, I would like to ask the Prime Minister to ask his question. Allow me to first ask this question. When I was a child, I wanted to become an astronaut or I become an engineer to fly rockets to outer space. But I have a question. Being on a spaceship and observing the Earth and also observing the moon and the sun, what do you feel? I think it's impossible for us to observe the Earth and being on Earth, but watching, observing the Earth, as well as the moon and sun from your spaceship. What is your impression? Thank you very much for your question. Um, it is a great honor for me to be able to speak with the Prime Minister. Well, um, when I observe the Earth, it's blue and beautiful um, during the daytime. But um, what impressed me most is at the edge of the Earth, we see uh, this atmosphere big layer, which is uh, colored deep blue. And this layer is protecting the Earth. And um, we have to preserve this Earth, which is indispensable to us. Now, the sun, yes, it's very bright, and it's uh, white to a yellowish color. And it is a very powerful, muscular, um, and also sometimes appears to be very violent. And um, when, well, on the surface um, of the space station, um, uh, um, it is more than 100 degrees Celsius and, uh, in the sunlight and about one, minus 100 centigrade, centigrade um, in the dark. And um, yes, I think um, that the moon is quite similar to the Earth. It's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you very much. I also remember how the Earth, um, how I observed the Earth from the spaceship as well. I also invite Mr. Takagi, the Minister of Education, Science, and Technology, to ask a question. I had a chance to see you in May. It's been three months since then. Thank you for the great work that you did, first and foremost. As you became the astronaut, it, you spent 12 years before you made the first um, trip to the space. So you spend many years going through lots of trainings, and so you must be a person with much with a lot of patience and also perseverance. How were you able to survive these many years going through all these trainings? I really wanted to work in space. I had this passion and determination, and that supported me to go through all these 12 years. And certainly, in retrospect, um, 12 years was a very long period of time. So um, a kid who was born when I started training is now a sixth grader. And after the, uh, the accident of the uh, Columbia in 2003, of course, we felt completely at a loss. And I personally uh, did not, um, was not able to foresee how things will develop going forward. However, I thought that it wouldn't do any good if I, if I just keep worrying about something that I cannot control myself. I thought I should just do whatever I can, and then tomorrow is going to be a better day than today. And I thought that I'll be able to come closer to my objective. And I think that paid off. Thank you very much for your question. Thank you so much. 
Thank you very much. Um, we would like to ask the Prime Minister and Minister to ask questions later on. And now we are joined by six children from the earthquake-stricken areas. And uh, they will join us now. Please. Let's begin with Ms. Kikuchi. Uh, my name is Shino Kikuchi, um, second grader of the Fukushima University Affiliated Primary School. Many of my friends from Fukushima have evacuated from their homes. I hear the radiation level in outer space is higher than that on Earth. Aren't you scared? That is a very good question. Thank you. At ISS here, we have between 0 0.5 to 1 millisievert of exposure. And so uh, it is between 100 to 500 millisievert during six months of stay. But I'm not scared. This is the environment that I am in right now. But I'm conducting various uh, scientific experiments uh, to make people's lives better and also try to make the preparation so that everyone can travel easily to space in the future. Thank you. Next, Mr. Ishiwata. Yes, my name is Kei Ishiwata. I'm a second grader of a junior high school affiliated with Fukushima University in space. Where does radiation come from? Well, thank you very much for your question as well. Now, radiation comes from different places. One of them is actually coming from the sun. The sun um, is, of course, a very good planet that gives us the heat as well as um, the energy. However, it does also emit the radiation as well. And also sun radiation comes from the outside of the, um, the sun system as well. So we are exposed to different types of um, um, radiation in addition to um, X-ray and also gamma. We also get other types of uh, radiation as well. And so we are at ISS is also doing some study as to what kinds of radiation is coming with at what particular magnitude. And when in particular man travels to the Mars, of course, the radiation is a very critical issue. And so how to protect the people from the radiation exposure through uh, medicine as well as the food is something that we are studying. Thank you for the good question. Next, Ms. Fujita. I'm from Iwate Prefecture. My name is Miyu Fujita from Old Municipal Primary School. When there was a blackout due to the earthquake, we experienced a number of difficulties. And yet at night, when I went outside, the sky was beautiful, filled with stars I'd never seen before. Is there a difference in the stars you see on Earth and in space? Yes, I myself, um, I have gone to the mountains in a remote area um, to train, and it was like a jewel box, the stars in the sky. Likewise, in space, we can see a number of stars, but there is one difference in, out in space. The stars in space that we observe from here do not glitter. Well, in, on Earth, we can see the stars glittering because of the atmosphere. Uh, but in outer space, we can see a lot of stars, but they do not glitter like we see on Earth. So from that perspective, I think it's more romantic to observe stars on Earth. Thank you very much. Next, Mr. Oikawa. Well, due to the March 11th earthquake, the power and water supply got stopped, and we also experienced experienced food shortage. We felt very anxious and secure, scared, and yet we helped each other to overcome the situation. At ISS, due to some unexpected situations such as blackout and food shortage, do you feel anxious and, and uneasy? <laughs> Thank you very much for your good question. Uh, my answer to that question is we don't feel uneasy because we astronauts have gone through many trainings, and about 80 to 90 percent of the trainings is to prepare ourselves for the emergency situations. We are trained very well as to how we should be coping with the emergency situations. That's why we don't feel uneasy. And more than us, it is the, the people in the control tower on the ground that have gone through even more trainings. They are even better trained. And because we are communicating with them and working with them, 
We, feel, do, we do not feel uneasy. And you mentioned unexpected situations. That's a very good point. Of course, in the training, we do assume particular scenarios, and yet um, there could be some situations where we have never expected or assumed in the trainings. And if that happens, we work together uh, with the people on the ground and also work together amongst the crew in order to overcome the situations. Thank you so much. Thank you. And next, Mr. Kimura. My name is Ryota Kimura from Tohoku Gakuin High School. I'm a third grader. Which do you think will come first? The time when mankind will go to another galaxy or the time when time space travel will become a common thing? And how long do you think it will take for this to happen? Well, um, I think uh, uh, the space travel will come first. Uh, the reason is uh, because uh, going outside the galaxy um, requires uh, that we develop an extremely high-speed spaceship, and therefore there is a need to have a breakthrough um, in order for that to happen. Of course, if we could warp, if that would be a different story. Now, um, making space travel a common thing, well, um, I think um, it will start uh, from a few years from now, but um, to make it easily accessible, I think will require another 30 to 50 years. Well, um, if you think about the history of aircrafts, I think that is the length of time that we have to anticipate. Thank you. Next, Ms. Suekane. My name is Sakuya Suekane. I'm a third grader of Izumi Tadayama High School in Miyagi Prefecture. After the earthquake, uh, our life is difficult because of the stop of the power sh um, because of the power blackout. At ISS, could power supply stop? And if that happens, then what kind of conditions do you have to be living in, and how do you cope with the situation? Thank you very much for another good question. The power blackout could happen here as well. However, the blackout is going to be slightly different from the one that you might have at your house. Let me explain this a little bit more. Uh, you have uh, one power grid coming into, power um, cable coming into your house to receive the uh, power. However, we are using the photovoltaic panel. Uh, we have about eight panels or so to receive the power. And because we are getting the power supply differently through all these different um, eight panels, there could be some partial blackout. And therefore, for example, half of the lights within a laboratory, la laboratory could um, go off. And if that is the case, of course, we will cope with the situation. And also, in addition to the electricity, there could be some power being stopped um, to be supplied to the computers, uh, which is very critical. And if that happens, of course, we have to recover that. In order to cope with that situation, at the time of the design of the space station itself, we first and foremost do assume different kinds of emergencies so that we could proactively um, take some countermeasures as to what we would do um, in case certain scenario happens. For example, when it comes to a computer that would control the direction of the space itself, uh, the space, space station itself, um, if the computer goes down, and that will be a very critical problem. Therefore, we have a backup computer. And we also have three computers to control um, the system in the, comp the, the, the station so that we have the redundant system. Um, and so uh, this is how what's been incorporated already in the design of the computer as well. So at the time of the design of the space station itself, we do have to prepare ourselves as to how we should cope with the situations when an emergency happens. And and this is also how this uh, keyboard, the Japanese exp um, the experiment module, was uh, designed as well. But still, um, we might see some situations which were completely unexpected. If that happens, of course, we do interact and communicate with the people on the ground. Thank you so much. It seems that we have some more time. Would anyone like to ask additional questions? Mr. Ishiwata? Yes. My name is Ishiwata uh, from Fukushima University of Lady Junior High School. Outside the ISS, um, when you do the spacewalk in your astronaut suit, um, does it, this space suit reflect um, the radiation so that you're not exposed directly to radiation? 
That is again a very good question. Yes. Um, well, um, the space suit is not designed so that it can shield out radiation. Of course, it does try to shut out to a certain extent, but it does not contain any lead to try to totally shield radiation. Therefore, uh, when we do the spacewalk uh, wearing the um, space suit, we will be exposed to a little more radiation than normal. But it's only for six to eight hours that we do this work, so it does not have a major impact on us. Thank you for the good question. Thank you. Thank you. Perhaps one more question from Ms. Sue Kane. How much calorie do you consume in an ISS? Um, is it different from um, us on the ground? In addition to calcium, do you intentionally take any particular nutritional elements at ISS more than you would do on the ground? Well, thank you very much for the very um, um, technical question. Now, we assume that we consume about uh, 3,000, a little less than 3,000 um, kilocalorie. However, uh, we don't necessarily take that much calorie because different from being on the ground, we feel uh, very full quite easily. And I think it, uh, worth, uh, it does require uh, more research as to why it is the case. But because we feel so full, uh, we don't perhaps necessarily eat that much. But of course, if we feel hungry, then of course we do eat more. And we also do make to, need to make sure that we need to take calcium as well as protein in our food as well as vitamin D in order to uh, make sure that the bone which has been weakened is uh, can be strengthened. Thank you for the very scientific question. Thank you very much, and Dr. Furukawa, for answering these very difficult questions with a smile. Now, can we ask the Prime Minister if he has any additional questions or comments that we'd like to make? Yes, please. Yes, um, I'd like to ask uh, Dr. Furukawa another question. Well, um, Dr. Furukawa, you are a doctor by profession. And um, being a doctor, um, using your knowledge as a doctor, are there any specific experiments that you're conducting or any specific research that you're conducting? Well, I think um, your profession as a doctor and also your work at the spaceship might have some connection. Thank you very much for the question. Well, um, yes, um, we are carrying out the protein crystal growth experiment in weightless environment. Uh, we can create more um, higher quality crystals. And um, by taking this back um, to Earth and analyzing, we can understand better the 3G structure. Um, and um, we believe that this will link the way uh, to um, curing cancers. Well, about uh, three meters away from this um, camera, there is this experiment rack uh, because um, the, um, the, there are the veins which are giving nutrition to the cancer cells. And uh, because of these uh, veins, um, we um, see the cancer grow. But if we can uh, sever this route of nutrition, then we can um, curb uh, the growth of cancer cells. And so we are trying to create uh, such crystals for this purpose. And in September, this will be brought back to Earth using the Soyuz a Russian a space set up, a spaceship. And we hope that this will lead to the development research of new medicine. And um, we believe um, that this can contribute to bettering people's lives on Earth. Thank you for the very good question. Thank you very much. The wonderful answer, um, because he's a doctor, he was able to provide such a good um, answer. Um, Mr. Takagi, I believe that you feel very tense all the time, and I believe that you need to be very careful in whatever that you do. How do you vent your stress out? Uh, do you do any entertaining activities on the spaceship? <laughs> Well, thank you very much for the question. Together with our my colleagues, um, I might just relax by relax by chatting, or um, I do enjoy music, or I might take some pictures or photos or videos um, through the windows. 
From the space, we can see this very special view of the space. So during the weekends, we have a little bit more time、um, for leisure, and I'm very appreciative of that. Thank you very much for your question. Thank you very much. Um, yes,、um, your smile always impresses us.、Um, Dr. Furukai does、uh, seem to be enjoying his life on the ISS. And um, any, um, the children from the earthquake stricken areas, do you have any additional questions that you'd like to ask? Well, it might be difficult、um, to be asked to ask a question.、Um, Dr. Furukai. Well, I think you're halfway through your mission.、Um, in the second half of your stay at ISS, um, um, the Prime Minister would like to send you some words of encouragement. Yes,、um, well, and today the children have joined us、um, in this event, and、um, we're very grateful for having this opportunity. It was very enjoyable talking to you. I. I hope that the children will gain interest in space, and if possible, we want children to follow the footsteps of、um, Dr. Noguchi and、um, Dr. Furukawa. And、um, I hope that children will want to become an astronaut and go out into space in the future. I'm looking forward to this happening.、Um, earlier,、um, you explained about、um, the protein crystal、um, research、uh, for curing cancer. I hope that、um, such research will progress in outer space so that、um, this will lead the way to scientists carrying out research in outer space. I wish you all the best. Thank you. Now, last but not least, I would like to ask all the children to say a word to Dr. Furukawa. Dr. Furukawa, I hope that you will keep up with your good work. Thank you so much. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes the event. Thank you, Prime Minister Nato Khan and all participants. Station, we are now resuming operational communications.